male female relation love is the fragrance of your being it is the way of communion with the unknown and unknowable love is the ultimate way to relate there are two things we know what is etiquette but there are two types of etiquette outward etiquette and inward etiquette while we are living in the world we must follow the outward etiquette christianity is very well versed in outward etiquette but when you are going in inward journey this outward etiquette becomes an obstacle we see in the office people are paying their respect to the others greeting one another these are all symptoms of outward etiquette Dale Carnegie says in order to establish a healthy male female relation you have to say to your spouse at least a couple times for the day i love you you may say it outwardly but do you mean when you say i love you love is an unseen and unknown energy it is speaks through silent gestures a simple look a glance is more than enough to express itself then outward words of i love you when you look at your spouse in silent gestures you speak more than what is necessary you speak your heart out love is an unseen but realized truth it is speaks through silent gestures and when it is speaks in silent gestures it pronounces aesthetic beauties simple look is more than enough communicates more than the words that are empty i love you for male female relation you have to dive into relationship remember i am using the word relation it would be better if i had used the word male female relating in caption but that will sound somewhat of male female relating but that is meaningful it communicates something relating is a verb and relation and relationship is noun when for the first time bible came to southeast asia it was being translated in the language of burma in burma there is burmese language there is no word like is it was a great difficulty to translate the message god is they could not translate it correctly so they made it into a beautiful statement god becoming which is much more relevant everything is constantly moving towards its merger river is rivering is a process of its movement and movement for what merger with the ocean that is the ultimate destiny each one of you is rivering towards the ocean 
and which is the ocean? The ultimate reality, the totality. So it is male-female relating. And why male and female have to relate? To attain fulfillment, to attain satiation. If you are not satiated or you, are, you have eaten the food which is empty, you are looking for next moment and your motto will be what to eat now. I have eaten this, what to eat now? And this is how our male-female relations are. Very rarely a relation satiates. And unless satiation happens in male-female relating, you will remain always hungry looking for some other opportunity what to eat now. For this you have to dive into the relationship. Go deeper into it physically, emotionally, and instinctively. There are several doors to go into relationship. However, whatever door you choose, be a witness to it. You remember I said many times, children are born through you, not from you. Door you enter into something. Witness means whatsoever you are doing, you are aware of it. Not a mechanical, you are eating food and watching someone passing on the street or what is going on on the TV screen. You remember that according to British traditions, where they have the dining hall, they had the only soft music playing, not television. Now we have, according to the American standards and the modern way of preparing the living room, the living room, the dining room and kitchen is in one compound, not separated, not having separate boundaries. You are cooking food and you are watching your favorite shows, eating food and television is turned on. And we call it a way of relaxing. But what it does, something is entering into you physically, something else is entering in a different way. Whatever you are seeing on the screen, if there is an emotional turmoil on the screen that enters you, you are eating that as well. And you are not getting satiation from the food that you eat because you are not available to the moment. Unless you are available to the moment, whatever you are doing, it is not going to give you satiation. You may do something like a robot mechanically and satiation will not come back. It comes when you are totally available to the moment. The food is going into your mouth, it reaches the mouth, you are getting the complete taste of it as it disperses within the mouth, mix it with the saliva, chewing. When in the master chef competitions you have to taste the food, watch a judge tasting your food when you cook. First he looks at it as it is served on the platter. What he is looking, it looks its appearance. How is it? If it is a sponge cake, 
he may use his finger to feel the fluffiness of it. Take it in the spoon, feel it again by its looks, then he smells it. So first through the eyes, then using the finger through the touch, then through the smell, and then he puts in his mouth and remains quiet for a moment, not doing anything. How does it feel in the mouth? Then he chews it very gently to feel all the ingredients in it, the flavors into it, how the flavors are blending into it. It may have odd combinations using purple yarn, cream, cinnamon, orange flavor, coffee, chocolate. All these things can be infused into if you are a master chef. So the judge gets a first, he asks what, what you did in that. Then he feels whether any particular flavor is overpowering the other or not. Oh, these flavors have blended into it, into a synergistic harmony. So in a way, he takes time to taste your food. And that's how, why he is called a master chef and a judge. In the same way, whatever we are doing, we have to experience it at all the levels, physical, emotional, whatever levels you can introduce into it. You have to use all the levels to experience it. Then he is becoming a witness to whatever he is doing. If he just puts it in his mouth and eats it, finished. He will not get a taste of it. How the taste of coffee, taste of chocolate and tea merging into one another in a cake with cinnamon flavor and topping of the color of purple yarn in the mousse that is being used to garnish and it has the orange flavor. How are these flavors are blending into one another and not overpowering anything and you can taste all these flavors. This is the way of witness. And witness in all the situations will transform you. You will be able to mention all the fine tunings that are there. Otherwise, no. You can go on changing your husband or wife a thousand and one times, but you will again and again find it same type of man or a woman and the same misery repeated in different forms. Same type of when you choose leave one partner and go to another, the things go worst, always goes worst. Same type of person, same situation and the same misery goes on repeating itself. It is almost the same. You can change your wife or your husband in the name of this and that, but you are not changed. We have learned the art of blaming the other for failures or for problems, but we never look into ourselves that maybe there is something I am not doing it correctly. And 
The journey of thousand miles begins with the first step and first step is the one that you have to take. You can change your wife or husband but you have not, you are not changed. Now who is going to choose the other wife or the husband? You are the same angry person, same unsatiated one. You are going to choose another one. What you will choose? Definitely you will choose. The choice will come out of your immaturity again. Choice will come out of your insatiation. You will choose a similar type again. Experiment it with this. Experiment it with this. The basic problem of love is first become mature and then you will find a mature partner. Then immature people will not attract you at all. It is just like that. If you are 25 years of age, you do not fall in love with a baby two years old, do you? Exactly like that. When you are a mature person psychologically and spiritually, you will never fall in love with the baby. That's why all the problems of running away with this one and that one happens during teens only. When a person matures, does not run away with a male or a female. It does not happen that way. Also it cannot happen. You can see that it is going to be meaningless. In fact, a mature person does not fall in love. Instead, he rises in love. But we use the word fall in love. But do you know, what are you saying? Falling in love is important. That is what you are meaning, falling in love or rising in love. Nobody rises in love. The word fall is incorrect. Only immature people fall. They stumble and fall down in love and they continue to stumble one after the other. Somehow they were managing and trying to stand up on the quicksand of love, quicksand of immature love. And they keep on stumbling again and again. Somehow they pretend that they are standing. They cannot manage and they cannot stand. They find a woman or a man and they are gone. They were always ready to fall on the ground and creep. Sometimes they go into the quicksand and they cannot find themselves way out to come out of it. They do not have the backbone, the spine. They do not have that integrity to stand alone. A mature person has the integrity to be alone. And when a mature person gives love, he gives without any strings attached to it. He gives it totally. He simply gives. This is his sharing. And when a mature person gives love, he feels grateful that he, you have accepted his love and not vice versa is the case. He does not expect you to be thankful for it all and he is not expecting you to be thankful at all. He does not even wait for your thanks. He thanks you for accepting his love instead and he goes his way. And when two mature persons are in love, one of the greatest paradox of life happens. Two mature persons in love is one of the most beautiful phenomena. They are together and yet they are tremendously alone. They are together and yet they are tremendously alone. They are together so much so that they are almost one. 
but their oneness does not destroy their individuality. In fact, it enhances it. They become even more individual, more alone. Alone means all one. Two mature persons in love help each other to become more and more free. No bondage. There is no politics involved, no diplomacy, and no effort to dominate the other. How can you dominate the person you love? But this is what we do in the name of love. We try to dominate and we think dominion, domination is the way of love. You dominate the children, you are being dominated by your parents, you never experience a moment of freedom, a trace of freedom. Just think over it. Domination is a sort of hatred, anger and enmity that you, everyone have towards their parents, towards their teachers. How can you think of dominating a person you love? You would love to see the person totally free and independent. But we are afraid. If we let loose or give freedom to the person, the person may go astray. And this is the reason when we are teens, immature, we run away. And things like these happen. You will give him more individuality. This is the reason why I call the love between two mature persons the greatest paradox. They are together so much that they are almost one. Two sides of the same coin. One becomes the reflection of the other. However, still in that oneness they are individuals. Their individualities are not destroyed. They have become more enhanced and expanded. They have enriched each other as far as their freedom is concerned. When immature people fall in love, they destroy each other's freedom, each other's individuality by creating bondage and a prison. And each lover feels that he is living in a prison. And how does he feel to come out? By abandoning that prison. No. You can come out of that prison by going deep within you. Start cherishing your aloneness. Mature persons in love help each other to be free. They help each other to destroy all sort of bondages. And when love flows with freedom, there is no greater beauty and splendor than that. It is in that state when love flows with freedom without any bondage. Jesus calls it, God is love. When Jesus says God is, God is love, he does not mean your love. He means love that flows from within with fullness, which does not create bondage, which does not create prison, which flows unrestricted, gives freedom shares beauty and splendor. When love flows with dependence, there is ugliness. Jesus did not mean. Jesus is not, he looks like you, but he is much more than you. When he says God is love, means when love flows with freedom, with totality, with oneness, with awareness, Something is flowing out of you and you are aware, you are a witness to it, that something is flowing from deep within. There is no restriction, no bondage, 
no expectation. This is sharing. Love is sharing. Love is a splendor. Love is God. Let this be the communion between a male and female. This is the essence of male female relating. Love with freedom. Love with respect for one another. Love.